Hey guys, what is happening? Welcome back to another video. Now in this video, we are going to be talking about the efficiency of a brushless motor. And this is gonna be part two. We're gonna be basing this video off of the previous video where we talked about changing the gear ratio. Now we're gonna do a little different things in this video. Let's talk about exactly what we're doing. We're gonna compare motor one up against motor two, much like we did in the last video. Identical specifications here that is in blue, the 2650 KV versus our 1200. We also have an IO value there and an RM value pulled from the specifications used in the last video. Now the big difference within this video is that we're gonna change the voltage only of our system. We're not gonna be touching the gear ratio of our radio controlled car. Now one thing before we get too deep into this, I did want to mention that high RPM, it's much easier to extract the power out of those RPMs uh, than lower RPMs. Now the perfect example of where you can actually see this is with sport bikes. Sport bikes are able to produce a lot of RPM. Typically you would see much greater than 10,000 RPM and they also are able to pump out more than 200 horsepower from something as small as a one liter engine. Now there's a lot of two liter engines out there in, in cars that cannot pump out 200 horsepower naturally aspirated just as a comparison. Uh, same thing applies with our brushless motor. What we want to do is because we have the 1200 kV, we want to be able to bump that up. And the only way to do that is by using voltage. So let's figure out how we determine the voltage of motor number two. Now the way that we're going to do this here in our first step is we're going to figure out based on the last video what kind of uh, RPM we get out of our first motor. What we do is we take the formula of the RPM output equal to our KV multiplied by the nominal voltage of our pack. You'll be seeing that acronym quite consistently through the video. What we do is we plug our 2650, multiply that by our 14.8, and we get a total RPM output of 39,220 RPM. We then are able to take that and sub it into the exact same formula. However, we're gonna use our 1200 kV motor specification. We take our 1200, we multiply that by the voltage nominal of the pack, and that is equal to our set 39,220. We take the result of this and we get 32.683 bar. Now the bar over the three just represents that that number repeats itself. It's 6, 32.6833333 and it repeats. Uh, what we now need to do is determine how many cells are we going to need within our lithium polymer pack. What we do in order to do that is come up with another formula that's going to represent the voltage nominal of the pack equal to the number of cells multiplied by the nominal voltage per cell. The nominal voltage per cell is going to be 3.7. That is the value typically used in RC for a LiPo battery pack. We take our value of 32.68 that we just calculated and we set that equal to the number of cells multiplied by 3.7. The number of cells then equals 8.83. We then round this to the closest whole number and that being 9. We're going to have a 9 cell lithium polymer pack used in this example. We take our 9 cell, we multiply that by the 3.7 and we end up getting 33.3 volts nominal as an output of that pack. Now what we need to do is just make a simple comparison of the RPM that we are getting out of the 2650 kV motor because we did round up in this equation too. We did a little bit of rounding here. We want to compare that against our new RPM that we get from motor number two and make sure they're relatively close within a few percent. We take our output RPM equal to our KV multiplied by the nominal pack voltage and we get 39,960 RPM out of that motor number two. We then compare them and they're roughly within 2% or so. So that is going to be a very good comparison for us to use. The next step is getting into the details specific to this video, which starts with our power requirements. Then we're gonna talk about the efficiency and then we're gonna be looking at the practicality advantages and disadvantages. For our power requirements, we take the 750 watts that we used in the last video. And this was roughly and loosely based off of achieving a top speed of 50 miles per hour and that would be during some course of the acceleration up to that speed. And then what we're gonna do here is determine the actual current that we need to pull from each of our motors. Now power is equal to the voltage times the current. We take our 750 
equal to 14.8i. I represents our current. We do the calculation and i is equal to 50.7 amps. And we should have known that from the last video. This is for our 2650 kV motor. We do the exact same thing for our 1200 kV motor and we get a total uh, current output of 22.5 amps from the battery. So our motor is going to be pulling the 22.5 amps at 33.3 volts. You can see the big difference between these motors. One is operating at a high voltage and one is operating at a relatively lower voltage. However, the current is the exact opposite. We have higher current on our higher kV motor and lower current on our lower kV motor. This does make sense. Then what we want to do is determine the efficiency of both of these setups. We go through that by determining our copper losses just like we talked about last video as well as our iron losses that we also talked about in the last video. We then set the formula for our copper losses first. It's equal to I squared RM. This is just a power formula. Now where we're getting the losses is the current that is running and traveling through the windings multiplied by the, res the resistance of those windings which we have in the specification up here in blue. We take our 50.7, we square that and then we multiply by 0 0.006. The output of this is going to be equal to 15.4 watts. We do something similar for our iron losses in terms of using our specifications here. However, that specification is going to be our 14.8, which is the voltage that we're going to feed the motor. And we multiply that by the current that the motor operates at no load. That is going to represent 3.1 amps of current at no load multiplied by the 14.8 gives us 45.9 watts. The total sum of losses is going to be 60.9 watts of power. Now we do the exact same thing for our 1200 kV motor. We get 22.5 squared multiplied by 0.0235. We get 11.9 watts of power that's going to be wasted by the windings within the brushless motor. We do the same thing for iron losses that we did over here. We multiply 33.3, which is the voltage we feed the motor by the 1.1 amps. And we get a total output of 36.6 watts lost. We then do this summation of those two values that equals roughly 48.5. And we do notice that we get a 20% decrease with our 1200 kV motor. Now what's interesting about this is that in this case where we actually have higher voltage for our lower kV motor, we're able to extract the power more efficiently. Now this you have to keep in mind, it is purely from a simple model and looking at the theoretical side of our brushless motor using the parameters that the manufacturer gives. So this is very theoretical as to what would happen within this brushless motor. Even the 750 watts that we're estimating and predicting is theoretical. Uh, so what we have here is a significant savings of power when you compare the efficiency, you know, the losses versus losses of the brushless motor. It does appear that our 1200 kV motor this week is actually more efficient. Last week it was not, it was actually 20 something percent in the opposite direction, it was not as good. But when we change things up, we can actually demonstrate and show that it can be more efficient, at least on par. So here we get 20% more efficient. Now the way we did that is we had to use nine cells of lithium polymer battery pack uh, there instead. So that's a significant thing for us, a 4S versus a 9S. So let's look at the practicality and advantages and disadvantages of, is of this. Well, certainly we know what the advantage of is. We have that written here, 20% decrease in the amount of losses, which means that we get better efficiency with this type of setup. You know, again, it's theoretical, I know, but that's what it's telling. That's what the simple model and the numbers are telling us. Now, one of the things that we do have to consider is items like what happens with our battery pack. If we do use what we would typically use, which is 5,000 milliamp hour in our setup, that is what our 4S uh, motor is going to use a 5,000 milliamp hour 4S battery pack. If we were to use a 5,000 milliamp hour battery pack at 9S, this would be a very heavy battery. Now what we need to do in a setup like this, if you were to use a 9S, you would have to weigh out the battery pack so that they're roughly equal in weight. That would make the most sense for the exact same 
uh, scenario within your radio control car. Now the way that you do it is you take your 5,000, you multiply that by four and you divide by nine. You're simply taking the ratio in order to determine roughly which one, which battery pack capacity would be equal in weight. If you do the math, you get a 9S 2200 milliamp hour versus a 4S 5000 milliamp hour battery pack. So you can see the big difference there. Now that's kind of like an awkward sort of setup there. The arrangement of batteries is a little bit different than we would be used to. A 2200 is very small, especially for a radio control car that can dump a lot of power. And this would be comparable to a 4S5000. These two powder battery packs can actually output the exact same amount of power, assuming that they have both the same C rating. Now, the next thing that we have to cover is the speed control. Why? Because you need a high voltage ESC and it is going to cost some money. It's gonna be more expensive than a typical speed control at 4S. Another item to note here is that the ESCs that are available, especially at 9S, it's uncommon that you would see a radio controlled car ESC that can go above 8S. With that even being said, there's very few ESCs that are gonna be upwards of that higher voltage region. Typically you would see ESCs max out at about 8S. I don't know of too many that actually go above and beyond that 8S mark. That's another reason why the practicality of using a 9S battery pack within your application doesn't look so hot, doesn't look so good. Uh, so this is the primary reason why you don't see a lot of guys operating a higher power setup using a significantly higher voltage input to their system versus some, what the typical setup would run, which would be in this case 4S. 4S is very common for a 1 8 scale buggy on the lower end of the power side. So there you have it. You're able to see, you know, from our first video, how we compare the two scenarios that we have, brushless motor number one versus two, when we only change the gear ratio. In this video, we talk about only changing the voltage and we maintain the same gear ratio because our RPM is actually very close to the same. So we don't need to touch our gear ratios. You can see the difference that it makes in a theoretical manner to our efficiency. I hope these videos help. Don't forget to like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so I can see you in that next video. Thank you for watching.